Hello and welcome to Learning in Technology. My name is Frank and I'm glad that you're here. In this video, I want to talk about audio settings and specifically audio feedback. One of the things that can happen in a Zoom call or a Teams meeting is that our voice is too quiet or we get audio feedback. And both of those things we don't want to happen. So a lot of times we will increase the sensitivity of our microphone, which will then pick up our speaker and we'll get, oh, it's a nightmare. And I'll talk about that in this video. If you like this video, go ahead and hit like. And if it's useful to you, I hope you'll consider subscribing for more videos like it. Let's go have a look at audio and feedback, how we can prevent that. So let's start off by looking at some of the problems that can occur with sound. So your computer will have a speaker and it will have a microphone. And the microphone, of course, has input, so it receives audio. And the speaker has output, which sends out audio. That seems pretty straightforward, and I'm sure that makes sense to everybody. And normally, if you're working with your computer, that should all be fine. The problem can occur when, if I turn up my speaker too loud, all of a sudden the audio from the speaker gets captured as input to the microphone. And what ends up happening is we start forming this loop where the microphone makes noise, feeds the speaker, speaker feeds the microphone, and we get this loop, and that can result in a feedback loop for the audio. The other problem is that if I have this and I've got this turned down too low, nobody can hear me through the internet because I'm going to be connected out to my Teams meeting and my coworkers are going to be connected to my Teams or my Zoom meeting. And if I turn down the volume low so that it doesn't pick up the volume here, then they can't hear me. And if I turn my speaker down too low, I can't hear them. So what we have to do is create a balance between our input audio, which is our microphone, and our output sound, which is our speaker. And that balance should be such that the output does not get picked up by the input and that we don't get that sound loop. And that's not that hard to do. There are a couple of options that I have available to me in order to make sure that happens. Now, the first thing I can do is go into the sound settings on my operating system and underneath the sound settings, I can adjust the input and the output volumes. I'll show you how to do that. The other way that I can solve that problem is to avoid the built-in system which goes in through the air of my office and say I'm going to eliminate that and I'll show you this if we just clear this up a little bit. The other way that I can do this is instead of having the built-in microphone and the built-in speaker being used, I could replace either or or both of these. So for example, I could go in and I could purchase in an external microphone. And by having that external microphone of some sort, now in my case I have something called a Blue Yeti, but there's many different ones and I'll show you some options there. These microphones are designed to be more sensitive and more effective in not picking up the audio from ambient sound. The other thing that I can do is I could purchase an external speaker, which is most often seen in the form of a headset. So I could have headphones on because of course that, that audio is not going to leak out and get picked up by a microphone because what's going to happen is it's going to be over my ear. So I'll be able to hear it quite well, but it won't pick up, the, it won't send out the audio to this microphone. So we're trying to avoid the loop by eliminating the communication between the input and the output of speaker out and audio in because that's what causes the problems. Let's have a look at first how I can go into my system settings in order to see what those levels are. And then I'll show you a couple of options, both inexpensive and actually, to be quite honest, fairly expensive for dealing with audio. And it really depends what you're doing. If you're in meetings all day long, then you may want to go for something a little more expensive. And then there's also something to be said about aesthetics. If you're going to be in front of the camera all day, I personally do not like wearing a headset all day with a microphone on there, uh, just because I think that looks a little bit bulky when you're talking to people. And I'll talk about that in a moment too. So in order to work with my sound settings, if I go to my search here and I type in sound, you'll notice that I can go into my system settings 
And when I go into my system settings, this will give me all of my output speaker devices and all of my input microphone devices. Notice here as I'm speaking, you can see this little line going along. Test, test. And you can see that it's not going all the way to the end. If I go into manage my sound devices here, I'm using a Yeti, I'm not using a, uh, in this case here as a speaker, I'm not using my Yeti microphone as a speaker, that's a weird thing with the Yeti, but down here I'm using it as an input device. So if I go into my Yeti microphone as an input device, you can see that I can enable it or disable it. I've got a microphone that comes in through some software, I've got a camera interface. The key here is to make sure that whatever device I'm choosing in Microsoft Team matches, or Zoom, matches the, the tool that I'm using. So I'm using something called the Yeti Stereo Microphone. So when I go into a meeting, I want to use the Yeti Stereo Microphone. And if I go back, you can see here, I've got this bar, but it's not peeking out. So it's not, it's not as if it's so sensitive that it's going to pick up any ambient sound around me. So hopefully that means you're not hearing a ton of echo while I'm speaking and you're not hearing a lot of background noise when I'm speaking, but you can hear me clearly and distinctly. The same applies to my speakers. Notice right now that my volume is not maxed out. If my volume was maxed out and if my microphone was set to be super sensitive, then the output from the speaker would be input for the microphone and that's where I would get that I would not just get an echo, I would get feedback and that would be problematic. So you want to make sure that your microphone is working and you want to make sure that your speakers can be heard, but you want to balance these out so that one doesn't interfere with the other. We can also go into, when we go into sound settings, you can fix sound problems and set up a microphone. If I go into setting up a microphone here, this will go in and give me information on how to go into system sound. So you can go into your settings, your system and sound, choose your input device, and you can test a microphone by going in here and also going into sound. So this just directs you to here, okay? And that's help from the web. If I go into sound control panel, you'll see that I can also go into my playback device. Those are my speakers. So you can see that in my case, I actually am using my speakers from my computer. So I actually have high definition audio on my laptop. And for recording, you can see that my microphone, if I scroll down here, my active microphone with the check is my Yeti microphone. So I can go into my sounds, I can, you know, change my sounds and I can, you know, reduce the volume of other sounds. I can mute other sounds. This is when it detects communication. So this is another great way of going in and adjusting some of the sounds when I receive things like telephone calls in order to create clear, more, less echoey sound. So this is a trick here to go into the communications. And I like reducing the background sounds by quite a bit. You can also mute other sounds and such, but I'll go ahead and say, okay, here. Now you can also go into your control panel and underneath the control panel, you'll notice that there's hardware and sound. Underneath the sound options here, you can adjust the system volume on any of your devices. So here's my speakers. So I can adjust the headphones and the output here. And if I go into my changing my system sounds, that just changes, you know, that goes back to this panel here. And if I go in and manage my audio devices, here's where I can go in and get to my playback and recording as well. So the key here again, is you want to make sure that there's a balance between the two. But that's not always going to be possible. There are times when it might be difficult to get that balance. You might wind up with not being able to hear very well, or you might wind up with a situation where you're not being heard very well. There are some options that I do recommend if those if that's the case for you. Working with uh, the internal system audio, in many cases it's fine and your system will adjust itself accordingly. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit finicky, to be quite honest. And so what I like to do is I actually prefer not to use that internal audio. I just don't like the idea that if I forget to turn down my volume, my microphone picks it up. I don't like the idea if I've set my microphone too sensitive, then it starts picking up the volume. Just to avoid that problem uh, altogether and to get actually better, better audio, I like to use an external input device and 
or an external output device. So one of the simplest things you can do is just get a set of headphones. If you have a set of headphones and plug that into your system, and that might be a USB jack, or that might be um, in an actual, there's audio ports on a lot of computers. Most of them nowadays, of course, will have a USB. So you have a USB connector there. And if not, you can buy very inexpensively. You can buy an audio to USB, or you could buy a USB to audio, depending on the style of headphones you have. So you can plug a set of headphones in there, and then you'll be able to hear without, of course, that sound bleeding back into the microphone. So that's one way of doing it. Another way that you can do it is you can have input such as this here is a Blue Yeti and that plugs in through USB. Now these are pretty deluxe and they're pretty pricey as accordingly. So something like this really is something if you're going to be doing a lot of podcasting or recording a lot of audio, then you may want to invest in something that's pretty high end like this. A nice alternative that I really like is also by that company called Blue, and this is called a Snowflake. And this is a very portable little microphone that you can uh, plug into the USB port of your computer. It's not nearly as expensive as the, as the Yeti, but it is still very high quality. There's also a very price uh, or budget sensitive one. This here is a little lav mic and I've got a link down below, I believe, for that one. I think I have a link for two of them down below. And, I, and just as all fair warning, those are affiliate links, which means I get a kickback if you buy off that link. Don't worry about it. Don't, you don't have to click that link. Go on your own if you want to search it out. But I use a little lav mic and this little lav mic can plug into the audio port or it could plug into a USB depending on the adapter you have for it. And that is a great way to just put that on your shirt and then you can speak into that lav mic. The reason I like to choose a different input for the audio voice is because I don't have to wear a headset then. So when I'm on the screen, all you'll see, well, I won't see it if I don't draw it in a different color, all you'll see is my smiling face. You won't see me with a headset on, right? And the headset I find can be a little bit distracting. So by using a, a better audio device that is picking up my audio, but not feeding back into the, uh, or not picking up the speaker, just picking up my voice, either by moving it close to my mouth or having a better quality mic in there, uh, that's going to solve that problem. However, also fairly inexpensively is you can purchase a little USB headset that has both the speakers and the microphone contained in one unit. And when you plug those into your system, you will now go into your system settings. And just like I showed you a few moments ago, instead of saying internal microphone, you'll make the external one active. And most of these are plug and play. They're, they're quite good. You just plug them in. Sometimes you have to make sure that you do go into the sound settings and, and basically disable your internal equipment and make sure that the external one is the one that's being used. Whether you go for the headphone, headphone microphone, or just microphone route. I hope this was helpful. And if there, you have any questions, just ask below in the comments. But getting good quality sound in meetings and teaching is an important thing. And my highest recommendation would probably be to go something like the little snowflake here for input and then just use your speakers for output or go for a headset that gives you both in one. Uh, this one here is good, a little bit inexpensive. And, you know, it's nice if you're going to have that where you're going to videotape yourself or something. And this one might be a little cost prohibitive. Well, now that you know about audio feedback, how it works and how to prevent it, I'm looking forward to having Zoom calls that have no more audio feedback in them because you'll share this video with everybody who's causing that problem and we will eliminate it from the planet Earth. Well, maybe that's a bit optimistic, but do feel free to share the, share the video, subscribe, like, and all those good things. I have some more tips and tricks here that you can use in order to improve your Teams meetings and your Zoom calls. And if you did find it useful, uh, hit like and comment down below. I'm happy to make more videos to help you out. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it.